one BLT, one Italian sub with the little yellow peppers, not the spicy ones, but the sweet ones, <laughs> and two of those little cookies that they have. After that, head on over to the mortuary. There has been some bodies that have been donated to Victor's efforts. File me in this Renfield, and it will be you who I donate. P.S. On the way back, pick up one of those little cakes at Hans and Gretel's place. I've had a hankering for them. Wonderful. As we find ourselves in a snowstorm. Hell yeah. Underneath a rather large apple tree, we find Dr. Doolittle and his animals, Dorian Gray, and you might have guessed it, Johnny Appleseed, having hunkered down underneath this uh, nice, uh, nice apple tree. Uh, Johnny, you can tell it's fairly old and it's almost like fate brought it here. Um, it must have been planted, you know, years and years and years ago um, for this very moment to shelter you from the storm. Uh, yes, the great apple tree in the sky provides for us again. You all have lost sight of Paul Bunyan and the rest of the group on their way to Scrooge's Manor. Um, you swore you maybe heard something land in the distance, uh, let out a, a belt of frustration, um, but the noise has subsided. Uh, so whatever monstrous thing was out there is no longer a threat. That was Grendel. He got thrown in the snow one time. <clears throat> Well, I'm dogpiling with my animals for warmth. Yeah, but guys, how how the hell do we get lost in downtown London? What the fuck is going on? Is that where we're at? I've been I haven't lost on these streets before, I'll tell you. <laughs> lost on these streets. Ebenezer's house should be somewhere around here. I... I might be able to remember the way. I'm usually... too drunk when I have to go see him. Now, why in Darnation would we want to leave this great apple tree? Uh, because we're freezing to death. No, we're not. <laughs> um... I think that's just... your opinion. Ah... <laughs> As he's shivering. Nah. We're not cold at all. Well, Chi Chi is freezing. Chi Chi is is definitely not doing great. I'll, Probably I'll, Dab Dab I'll, the duck is also not I'll, doing yeah, too hot. The the duck, the parakeet is not in great shape. Um Chi Chi holds up Dab Dab and is like <laughs> he's I think he's frozen, boss. And like, <laughs> damn, damn's like just a solid clump. He is sort of hunkered down and is near death. We gotta get out of here. Hold on. Let me check my. No, I don't have any. I was, I was gonna see if I could. Uh, I was gonna see if I could cast like bonfire or something, but I have nothing useful. <laughs> I have no useful spells. You're Dorian. Uh, make a perception check. Oh, there it is. 19. Dor Dorian, you look around, and in this blizzard, you see what looks like a post box. Um, oh. At there which it has, it has the name... Uh, home of Dr. Jekyll, uh, which you know is the neighbor of Ebenezer Scrooge. Yeah, we're, we're almost at his house. I think uh, 
it's only oh let's see uh, probably another quarter mile that way he's dab dab he's, won't make a quarter mile his estates are rather large fucking bankers I don't know why you guys eat all this land. It should just be turned into orchards. Um, yeah, I assume I know like whether it's the left or the right. Yes, yeah, so I'll say because of the the post box, you actually know pretty much the direction of where his estate should be. Um, however, the blizzard is pretty aggressive. Um, so how are you guys going to attempt to wade through it? Um, hmm. Oh, wait. Has Johnny Appleseed caps pass uh, absorb energy on himself? Oh. And does cold. <laughs> wait. As you... Never mind. It does, it does not prevent it. It does not prevent All right, I'll let you. Johnny has an idea, and the apple tree goes, that's not going to work like that, man. Well, thanks, man. Um. Oh, I know how I'm going to do it. Uh, Dorian's going to gonna pull his painting off of his back and doodle a nice bright sun up in the top right corner of his painting. <laughs> okay. roll, roll 2d6 for me. We'll determine. He's not very good at drawing. Four. All right. You roll. <laughs> you you go to draw a sun on your painting. And when you do, it just kind of rubs off and really isn't that useful. Um, but Dorian, when you turn and look, what did you draw it with? Uh, just like a pencil. A pencil? Yeah. All right, when you look on your shoulder from where it has sort of washed off a little, you have this, like, big black stain on your shoulder now. Uh, God damn it. Okay, I'm out of ideas. Well, how about we just walk? Uh, I guess. I mean, no other choice, really. <laughs> All right. Well, hold on. Hold on now. I am going to... Uh, I'm going to... I'm going to try and use my animals. For food? <laughs> Uh, to make a sleigh, let's let's see what we've got here. A lot, a lot of birds. Birds aren't going to be useful. I think yeah. the pig and the dog, though. I can use the pig and the dog, uh, and sort of. Does anybody have any rope or anything? I don't have any equipment. <laughs> how, how do I not have any equipment? You probably have rope. Uh, okay. Ha there's this unicorn. You have a unicorn. Yeah, Johnny obviously takes out the unicorn. Have this thing. He pulls out a, unicorn. a straw unicorn. Oh yeah, if we uh, should we waste the unicorn on this? I feel like we could probably just walk there. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Let's just walk. All right, let's walk. I'm gonna make it. I'm just gonna do like um. I'm gonna do an. Uh, can I use nature to try and, like like spread my weight across the snow effectively so that I don't fall in too deep and get too wet, you know? That, like, kind of that like... would probably be an acrobatics. Okay. Um, if you want to do something like that, you could do survival to find like a, a, a nice path, or you could use nature to kind of like follow the dunes in a way that would make logical sense, right? Okay, yeah, I'm going to try and do that because I'm more natureful than acrobatic. All right. Yeah. 23. All right. I need all of you to roll constitution saves with advantage as you guys sort of trek through there. Um, you're going in kind of a weaving pattern to uh, you're sort of doing the dunes. 
um, are sort of weaving through the dunes uh, in order to try and avoid much of the sort of brunt bruntness of the storm. Uh, Doolittle, you're going to take cold. nine points of cold damage. As a, Did we ever kind take of, a long rest after our fight with the unicorn, or no? Uh, no, you guys ran straight over here. Guys, we should have taken a rest. I'm very as cold. A, I don't know, I didn't take any through, damage. Uh, Doolittle, kind of, you're leading the pack, so, like, you, you're you taking quite a, quite a beating from this snow. Your animals are following in line behind you. Yeah. Um, but you, you feel like you're drawing closer. Um, you know, it's a very slow, slow path you've taken, right? You're, you're weaving sort of zigzaggy between dunes. Um, so it's, you feel like compared to Bunyan, who probably just trekked straight through, um, your path is just taking you a little bit longer. Uh, so long, in fact, you hear in the distance ahead of you a loud bang. And then another loud bang. The similar uh, sounds of Paul Bunyan's shotgun. Uh, the distinct sounds of them. So oh. When you heard all those ducks get shot. I feel a pang of sadness at that memory. But then I do say that like that sounds like we're getting closer, guys. All right. You going to try another nature check to... Make this last a leg of it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, not with advantage, but it's 23 either way, I guess. 23, all right. Everybody roll with advantage. Oh, yeah. Constitution check. Oh, God, I guys. I'm I, I might, I'm going to pass out before we get there. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Everybody is fine, but Doolittle. Doolittle, you take 10 points of damage. I, I pass out. So, so do little right here. You, you come out and you see it. You see a beautiful, warm house. You go in. It's lovely. They put you right by the fireplace. It's nice and warm. Uh, you feel just absolutely fantastic. The other two, uh, Dorian and, uh, <laughs> Dorian and Appleseed see, uh, do little's animals sort of dragging his unconscious <laughs> body <laughs> towards the uh, the sort of entrance of this house um, the outside of which is now lit um, it looks like this side room maybe is lit um, same oh, not in there but one of the side rooms is lit um, and you see large footsteps um, having made their way inside Oh, and Johnny Appleseed walks up to um, Doolittle and shoves a apple down his throat and heal him for uh, to the eleven. Eleven, Doolittle. Nice. You feel the sweet taste good. of an apple. Hmm. I, in um, my dream, in my dream, I'm drinking apple cider by the fire. Warm yes. apple cider. <laughs> Warm apple cider. And you turn, and there's a giant apple next to you with arms and legs. And it goes, you can thank me later, man. As you <laughs> <laughs> wake up uh, on the porch of this manor. What? <laughs> Now Burrow. that full day keeps the doctor away. Oh, wait, you're a doctor. I am a doctor. <laughs> I had I had the craziest dream. I was lost yeah. in a snowstorm. Yeah, that that happened. Oh. We Are thought you were dead, old chum. Says Gub Gub. <laughs> oh. Thank you for saving me, Gub Gub. I know you probably dragged me to safety. And I owe you my life. Right? No, he was trying to eat you. <laughs> no, 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 he didn't see him. 
Cub Cub, were you trying to eat me? Only out of respect, do little. Fair enough, fair enough. I know you'd want me to do the same. <laughs> As I, I would expect nothing less. I uh, pat him on the head. Chi Chi like nods and, and looks at you, do little, and says, "Mm hmm. If you had died and we got stuck out there, we would have had to cut Gub Gub open and like crawl in him for warmth." Oh yep, <laughs> many such cases. <laughs> We should probably get inside. It's cold as hell out of here. Yeah, it is pretty cold. Why? And Dab Dab's like hasn't moved in a while. <laughs> <laughs> you see, Dab Dab looks dead. Oh no! Can I make a medicine check on Dab Dab? You can. I'm not proficient in medicine. I'm a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> you get advantage with animals. I'll say. All right. Oh, good. That makes Glad logical sense. Seventeen. Dab Dab has entered a uh, frostbitten coma. All right. Panicking, I kick this door open and I come uh, rushing in. Uh, what do I see as I'm entering this? Um, you see, actually, the door in front of you is open and the door to the right is open. Um, the door to the right reveals a piano room. Uh, it is dark. Um, none of the sconches are lit in these two rooms. But I do see uh, some of our friends up here. Uh, no, no, they're in the actual separate here room. Then, okay. Yeah. This is a, uh, a and this closet. is a closet. Okay, I'm gonna go into yeah. this room that's open. Um. And I'm gonna look for something to light one of these sconces. Um, it appears uh, from what you can see that what material probably would have been used to light these sconches has been taken. It looks like a bench has been smashed and the cloth and fabric from it has been, been taken. All right, well, then I'm going to the next room. I'm kicking this door open unless anybody, I mean, I don't want to interrupt or I don't want to take the whole time, but I've got a, I've got a duck emergency right here. Now you're good. Kicking open the next door. This room is lit. Um, you see a, a nice warm fire uh, crackling at the end of the room. An old man is sleeping with his pants down and a bunch of dirt in it. He may have pooped his pants. It's hard to tell um, as you're rushing into the room. Uh, you do see a familiar dog uh, to the north and oh. a door open and what sounds like the end of a scuffle happening in this, this upper room. All right, well, I'll, I will... I will say uh, my greetings to the dog and immediately run over to the fireplace oh. here and start warming my duck. All right. You stick your duck in front of the fire and warm your duck Not up. in the fire. Is that what you call it? <laughs> that, well, that's what we call it nowadays. Um, a fox. I will say that your dog uh, lets out a, a noticeable bark. Um, not one of, of aggression or anything, just of like trying to get your attention. And I assume he's pointed at them? Yes, he's looking in this direction. Okay. Um, while he's reloading his uh, guns, he'll walk out and see what's going on. All right. Um, oh, one thing else that you noticed, uh, Fox, real quick, as you were up at the top of the stairs, it's almost like there was that hazy film again, similar to when you guys walked up to the door. Um, except it's at the top of the stairs. Noted. Um, but that's, yeah, you note that as you uh, head on over. Yeah. So I'll come out into this room and just say, oh, hey, Doolittle. Oh, hey. Good to see you. I'm I'm having a bit of a duck emergency, but... Uh, oh, perfect. Roasting some duck for us? Uh, no, 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 no. This is Dab Dab. <laughs> Jip goes, I got a first bite. <laughs> oh, yeah, I got I'll, uh, I'll, I'll just tell him that the rest of the party's in here and notify the rest of the par party that uh, Doolittle's arrived, at least. Uh, are the others with you? Uh, yeah, here comes uh, here comes that weird uh, tree guy now. Says the guy 
Not roasting a duck in front of a fire. Yeah. I always did. Like, what is it, a pet? I thought it was just like emergency ration you just kept around yesterday just to stay fresh. I would never eat my dear friend Dab Dab. <laughs> oh, you would eat the rest. <laughs> I would never eat any of my dear friends unless they wanted me to as a, you know, out of respect for the dead as... Gub Gub earlier mentioned. It is the end. We would do the same for you, Dan. I know, I know. <laughs> now, let me get this straight. You talk with your pets? I speak to the animals. And they call me insane. Speak to the animals. Well, at least animals make noise. Apples don't even make noise. How you dare talk you? to the apples. How dare you? You are not blessed with a great apple in the sky. An apple in your pocket goes, don't listen to him, man. Don't worry. He speaks I'm, blasphemy. He does. He's just a pithy heretic as he Johnny pats his uh, apple <laughs> seed uh, pouch. Uh, but as you guys are sort of entering this room, Dorian, you see Scrooge. He's wearing his uh, his sort of knightly garb. Um, he is sort of uncomfortably rolling side to side, uh, mumbling to himself. Uh, and as you get closer, you notice almost this like ethereal chain, a couple of them wrapped around him as he sort of unconsciously. No, I mean, I'm going to immediately run up to him and just start shaking him. My accounts. By counts, Scrooge. When you do, you hear and see now those chains. They're like spectral chains that shoot up out into the manor. There's three of them. Oh, shit. Uh, wait, wait, where do they go to? Uh, they head off. Uh, two of them. Actually, they all head off in this direction. Okay. Um, so, granted, so like, at different angles, right? So one of them oh, is, okay. is more horizontal. One of them like is more. One of them kind of goes more... through the floor, kind of deal. Yeah. Okay. Um, and you sort of shake him, and as you do, you see he has dirted his pants. Oh no! Ah, oh, where's his manservant when you need him? Yeah, you know, you know, he normally used to hang out with some weirdo. Uh, some other business uh, businessman. I assume he had a manservant, too. Uh, no, he was not going to pay nobody to do any of that. Are you crazy? Uh, this guy? Ah. Uh, that cheap bastard. Well, at least my pants aren't soiled. You notice the only, you know, the only people who ever really came over <laughs> here was anybody he was doing business with. Um, he was friends with another kind of asshole named Jacob Marley, uh, who once bought out an orphanage, uh, and kicked everybody out, uh, and was just kind of a, a terrible, terrible man. <laughs> um, and you know that he used to hang out with, uh, oh, what was his name? Uh, he had a little kid named Tiny Tim. Uh, and there was the other one, you know, the other guy who was always yeah. with them. Yeah, Steve. Yeah, Steve, you think is the name. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> as that, as you know, uh, he just kind of treated that guy like, like shit. And that guy did stuff out of the goodness of his heart. Uh, so he could get it done for free if uh, Scrooge wanted. Ah, well, friends, we have to stop these chains. Come on. And uh, Dory is just going to start running off. He's, he's concerned about his bank accounts. <laughs> he probably should have kept copies of all that, his documents. Running, but... running into the next room, <laughs> you see just fucking destruction. There's like broken angel statues and two massive holes in the beautiful marble floor.
Did y'all see oh, the chains? And the big statues destroyed. There, there were chains. D through two the massive, floor. Did, did Paul Dang. Bunyan fall through the floor? No, he shot his shotgun and missed <laughs> twice. So there's these Probably more than that, actually. <laughs> I also <laughs> imagine it's like a bunion-sized shotgun too. Yeah, when you said yeah. that, I thought the like the floor just gave way beside behind a gigantic-sized bunion and his ox. Uh, yeah. Mm. Mm. Actually, uh, Paul Bunyan, make a perception check. All right, all right. I'll give you. I'll give you that. You made a good point. Fourteen, I'll say with Babe, you know, sort of there with you, and yeah. both of you are standing here. Um, you hear underneath your feet, kind of a a, a bending of wood. Ooh. Um, not enough to be concerned. It's not like you're gonna fall through or anything. Um, but it does denote that it is hollow underneath where you're standing, um, implying that at least deep down there is a basement. Oh. Uh, how how flimsy would you say this wood is? It is not flimsy. These this oh. is a a very expensive house. Okay. So, uh, and the basement probably isn't just like under a couple of boards of wood. It's probably buried deep, but you can tell just by the sort of buckling of it that it's at least not supported by just solid stone. Understood. Yeah. Yeah. Paul. Uh, <clears throat> he looks at his axe and at the ground. He's like. Ah, it's actually a nice place, babe. We probably shouldn't do that. Oh. He goes, oh, I, I think I hear. So pa pardon me, <coughs> part, pardon me, excuse me. And he, he does this big song and dance of like getting around, babe. Babe, <laughs> Bay does not move. Yeah, he, like, uh, <laughs> he, he still, he squeezes past best he can. He goes, oh, pa pa er, pa pardon me. And he pokes his giant head through the door and he looks over at uh, Chi Chi and the gang. And he goes, Oh, you made it. Yeah. We did. It's a little spooky uh, in here. There's, I mean, there's ghosts and chains and stuff. Oh, I look around. Do I see the ghosts and the chains? I was, um, uh, I was, I was sort of, uh, I had a, I was dealing with a duck emergency. Uh, you just see Ebenezer Scrooge, uh, sitting in his chair. Oh yeah. This old, you talking about this old guy? Oh, well, I mean, he was always here. He's, he's been here the whole time, but no, th there were ghosts here, right guys? Yeah, there, there were ghosts here. Babe, babe moves in acknowledgement. Mm. Uh. Yeah. There, there's ghosts and chains. We, we fought a guy named Marley. Um, um uh, uh what what are we doing here again guys <laughs> honestly i have no idea babe i just we save we did Durians. we fought some ghosts banker yeah but why do we care about the banker tarzan not no what ask do you mean, why do you not what do you mean why do we care about the banker money's just you... a tool to keep the masses in check. Yeah, you only say that because you don't have any. Yeah, no, that is true. That is true. <laughs> That's true. Like, I don't have money, but the apple trees provide everything. I don't need that money. Paul Bunyan. Does the apple really? trees provide a wave runner. I yeah. don't know what a wave runner is, but really, this whole thing of that is a uh, Scrooge ha right next to me having the chains. Yeah. See, this guy. That's not a ghost, by the way. He is this. He's keeping the chains on him as a form of representation of his shackles to his coins. See, this is all a big one misunderstanding. We, I mean, your money's safe, but I mean, you should really liberate yourself from those chains. What you're saying is he's shackled to his shekels. Sure. I get what you're saying. It's like one of one of those what you call it, um, uh, analogy. I don't know what I'm saying. All I'm saying is money's money just corrupts everything it touches. You really should embrace the apple tree. 
<laughs> well, well, they're all chatting. I'm gonna try to use the key on the wall force up here. All right. When you uh, head up there, you try to use the key on it, and it doesn't work. It lets off kind of a out of tune ring. Also noted. Um, during the last session, did you say the ghost of Christmas, whichever it was, went up this way? Uh, it did. Okay. It looks like a, a, a spectral young girl. Okay, we'll start making our way over towards that door. Is Grendel doing something there, or is he just chilling? Uh, Grendel has moved up, having seen the ghost. Uh, he has crept to the door, and having seen the force field nature of some of the others, he gingerly reaches for the handle. You reach for the handle. And when you do, you put your hand on it. Grendel will look back to uh, uh, the red fox. Mm. Aquarius, this way, Mr. Fox. Yes, this way, Mr. Fox. And Grendel will take his giant hand and reach back behind him and pat Tiny Tim on the head. Oh, yes, shucks. Mr. Fox. Yeah, Fox will approach the door and uh, try to open it with the key. Oh, after you. Uh, you go up and ding, it lets off a, a harmonious hum as you unlock uh, what looks like a small little uh, entranceway. Um, okay. There is a pot uh, plant, and to the left is a cabinet with a couple of dishes and things like that. This looks to be like a, a place that uh, the staff set up before they bring food into this next room. Uh, okay, I'll just wait for the rest of the team for now. Oh, I'll let yeah. everybody know that I opened it. Yes. Can Grendel check this door as well? He can. Does it open? You, it does. As you open up this room, um, revealing sort of a, a sitting room, sort of opposite to the uh, the piano room, uh, there's a large taxidermied uh, bowl in here. It looks a little strange compared to a normal bowl, but um, there seems to be uh, other oddities in this room. There appears to be a cabinet with a couple of books uh, and a strange sword um, that's made of a piece of wood and a bunch of shark teeth. Ooh. Uh, sort of on display. Not with you. You see, Tim. I must yes. check all the rooms. Some might call me a completionist. I know the ghost has gone north, but I feel a desire to see all of the rooms. I cannot oh. help myself. I think I understand, sir. I like going and seeing things I normally can't see on my own. That's why I like hanging out with you. Yes, I am enjoying our time together as well, my Little snack. <laughs> oh. oh, I apologize. That's what it's all right. That's what my mom says about me. But I should not describe you as little, Tim. You are no. smaller than me. But I should not be diminutive. We are friends, are we not? Well, yes, of course we are, sir. Um... And it's all right. A lot of people just call me Tiny. They call me Tiny Tim. They do. That's horrible. Horrible. Yeah. They should call you Masterful Tim. No, shucks, sir. Thanks. I think so, too. You know, Tim, power is not something that is innate. It is something yeah. that is taken. 
Perhaps uh, you should think about that some. My mom says I shouldn't take things, uh, not without asking. Mm. Well, <laughs> I can tell you from experience that mothers can occasionally be incorrect. <laughs> he gasps. He gasps audibly at that. <laughs> now look at this deceased animal. And, oh wow! <laughs> and, and we we will re yeah. we'll take a look at it. Yeah. As you guys are are sort of gandering at that, I imagine Fox is like looking at that <laughs> happened across the room. Um. Tarzan but, will uh, step Dory. in that room with a Dory. torch so that Tiny Tim can see better. I don't. I'm assuming Grindel can yeah, see I'll... in the dark. I was going to say, the, the room is quite dark. Um, this room is probably the most lit of the rooms, uh, that and the piano room, just because they have fairly big windows. Um, but bringing in the torch definitely makes it so you can at least see a bit more. Uh, revealing that large bull and that strange sword. Mr. Tarzan, please watch those books around that torch. Tarzan will turn around wildly with the torch in hand. No! Oh, uh, Almost lighting the books on fire, but not quite. Oh, okay. Me not do. We will regard the animal. You said there was something strange about it. Yes. DM. As you stare at it, um, it is pretty big. It's not quite a normal bull. Its horns are more angular. Um, they're not as like smooth and round. Um, and it is, it's just inherently kind of strange. Does it seem like something from the past, something old? I need you to make a wisdom say. Okay. Um, sorry, I accidentally had to reload the page, so I have to grab my sheet. Wisdom save! Thirteen. Got the sheet real quick. Uh, All right, so did you miss me playing with my food? I did. What did you do? <laughs> oh, nothing. We're just hanging out, looking <laughs> at this bowl. <laughs> um, staring at this bowl, Grendel. Um, you suddenly feel yourself get a little woozy. Um, and when you reopen your eyes, you're much smaller. Your breath is in a panic uh, as a massive bull has sort of cornered you outside of where you live. Um, this is a memory from your youth. What happens in it? Grendel is cornered by the bull. He was outdoors uh, in the dead of winter. His mother told him not to go but he snuck out after dark after she was out, you know, killing humans. Mm -hmm. He found a, a bull cub and tried to pet it. And this giant bull came up towards him and cornered him. This strange bull has similar horns to the one you see in that, uh, foyer. Um, it knocks you around, basically like a rag doll. Um, you are going to take uh, eight points of psychic damage, reliving oh. this memory as this large bull smacks you around. 
Your mother remembered, or you remember your mother telling you about this bull, a dangerous creature, an ancient one called the bull of Marduk. Um, as it beats you around in a frenzy, a swarm of bats encases you and spirits you away to somewhere safe. Oh, and nice. That memory ends with you back in the room. Oi, sir, sir, you're shaking. Uh, Are you okay? Grendel spins his head around because I've decided he can do that. To look at Tiny Tim on his back. Oh! And there's mouth, le there's blood leaking from his mouth and nostrils. How would you bite your tongue, sir? Yes, Tim. Do not be worried. But try, maybe, not to look at anything too closely. They are, like me, simply figures of the past. Oh, Greta right. will rip the taxidermy's bull's head off of its body. Oh, hold on. I'll be right back. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm getting called out. Any... Give me one second. That's okay. Who's calling him out? Like, for a duel? No. <laughs> but now that he's gone, we can start leveling our grievances against him. Yeah. <laughs> Who's first? This piece Le of shit. It is almost festive. The airing, the airing of grievances. So when did Grendel become Palpatine? <laughs> Who says he's Palpatine? He's just tenderizing his meat. <laughs> Don't we all? Don't we... Oh, come on. <laughs> Don't we all? You perverts. This is a tiny kid we're talking about. Tiny Tim. Wait. Hey, no need to be so demanding. Grendel's not... <laughs> Grendel's not tendering... Tiny Tim's meat, is he? Oh. Let, let's Red, move Red, on. Red's got oh. some more oh. SVU crimes to investigate. Oh, oh, I don't like that at all. I don't like... Yeah, I, that's not can, appropriate. Can't I just eat his flesh and, like, you know, we can stay <laughs> away a, from all the nastiness? I meant a minor, not context. a minor. All on contents. Jeez, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. Why do you awaken me without skin? <laughs> uh. So yeah, Grendel is gonna reach up and he's gonna tear the head off of the taxidermy beast and oh. smash it through this door. You, boom! Smash it through the door. Uh. With with ease. Now see, Dim, there is a lesson here. This world can hurt you. But you can always hurt them back. All right. And you notice as you look over at Tiny Tim saying this cool thing that he had his eyes closed because you told him not to look at things. <laughs> you can open so he... your eyes now. To... Oh, oh. <laughs> All right. As we cut doo -doo -doo -doo, over to Dorian. Dorian, unlike the rest of them, you see something strange. Oh. Those spectral chains, you can actually still see them. Um, two of them are going up and into that strange sort of waviness um, that seems to be blocking the upstairs. One of them, however, is shooting straight across uh, through the statue, um, oh. obviously into the wall behind it, like into the back left. Yes, it is uh, basically in this direction. All right, Dorian's gonna rally the troops and uh, kick open the door. 
All right. I imagine Fox closed the door and then Dorian runs up and kicks it open again. Oh, yeah. This is the servant uh, room where they kind of prepare the food before they bring it out. All right. And then on to the next one. You go to kick the door open. And when you do, a sort of invisible force keeps you from doing it. Oh. Did we figure out how to get through the invisible force, guys? I believe Fox. Where is where is he getting hit by the Oh, he's just going up there. Mm -hmm. no. Um Okay, yeah. I'll, Fox will follow him in and use the key on the door. Uh, you see Fox pull out this strange key. Um I'll say that, Dorian, you've probably seen this key before. Scrooge tended to keep it on him, and it's a pretty, um, it's pretty, uh, what, what's the word I was looking for? Unique looking key. Huh. Um, as you do, you hear a, a click as the door unlocks, um, and you hear sort of a soft chime. Interesting. Oh well. Fox isn't going to open the door. He's, but he is going to draw his uh, revolver and ready in action in case something happens. All right. Revealing a dining hall. Um, this room is pretty ornate. There's lots of fancy chairs, um, and as you come in, this table is filled with a bountiful feast of food. Well, that looks good. Do I uh, still see where the chains are going or? Um, the chains enter this room uh, through the wall here, um, but then seem to almost fade away. Um, but they seem to have been heading in this direction. Hmm. The dog seems very interested in the food on the table. Uh, the dog actually does not seem interested. He doesn't? Okay. Even well. better. <laughs> huh. I'm just going to take a peek around, I guess, and... You know, poke things and... Uh, as you poke things, I need a wisdom save from old Dorian. All right. Sixteen. Dorian, as you're sort of fiddling and, and messing with the food on this table, we are, we are taken away. You are sort of brought to a memory of your past. It's you sitting at the table um, at your your manor. Your uh, most favorite maid is next to you. Uh, and your father is standing next to you. As he goes, Now, Dorian, I'll ask you one more time. Which one is the salad fork? As he cocks his revolver, pointing it at your maid. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I'm gonna point to the uh outermost fork. <laughs> there is a, a, Wait, a pause. The should, sound of the chamber. Should, Dorian <laughs> should get to Dorian should get to make a check to see if he knows this, because he should know this. <laughs> that was the wisdom say. Oh, okay. <laughs> the sound of the chamber rattling. In his old revolver, three shots already made long before this. There's been many dead butlers and servants. As you point to the fork, young Dorian, you hear it click. Good. You're getting it, Dorian. Before we're taken back whew, to this scene. 
a memory of your past having been forced upon you. Oh. You guys see that? Ne never mind. Uh, Dorian. You should, you should touch the food. Yes. Having confronted your path, you are going to be the only one to see what looks like a young girl floating over the table. She's staring at you. Uh, okay. Okay. I'm, I'm just going to pull out my gun and point it at her. She doesn't seem to react. You witch. You must let my banker go. <laughs> I'll be forced to take manners into my own hands, just like father. <laughs> <laughs> just like father. <laughs> she, she cocks her head, a little confused that you can even see her. Um, you then notice, as you're standing there, that in her hand is a piece of what looks like a strange um, sort of spectral flame wrapped in chains. Oh. Oh! As she holds it up. You want this? Yes. I think. Oh, I can't do that. My master not. says that you're not supposed to have this. And I, I have to do what my master says. Uh, Dagula? Uh, Dracula, Dracula, yes. <laughs> ah, ah, okay. And uh, Dorian's just going to walk up and just... Just fucking try to shoot her. All right. Dorian, you hold up your your gun <laughs> and fire it. Boom! All of you see Dorian just shoot at nothing. Um, Dorian, unfortunately, your bullet just goes right through her. What the hell is um, my crazy skull? What are you firing at, man? Uh, so has Dorian just been talking to himself through all this, like, to, from our perspective? He has now. Dorian with him bananas. with him up there like talking to himself and shooting shit. Um I guess with a held action, I am gonna point my revolver at him and just say maybe we should put the gun away, Dorian. <laughs> oh no, no, Dorian's gone insane. <laughs> Is there, there, there it, <laughs> let's just put the gun down. There's silverware on the table, right? Yeah. Uh there, and it's actually made of silver, I would hope. It is. Okay. I'm going to try to stab the ghost in the hand with a silver fork. All right, make an attack. All right. We'll do. Ah, I see that's, that's gonna hit. That will hit. <laughs> Roll a d4 plus uh, either strength or dex. Uh, let me find out which one of those is fire real quick. Uh, plus two, so five. Five. As you stab forward, you do hit something. The, the ghost girl recoils backward from this pain and goes, Ah, what are you? I thought we could talk this out, confront your past so that you may grow into a better person. But I see that that is off the table. Um, and as she does, all of you see that food now start to rot. It was all rotten food. Uh, she is still invisible to the rest of you, but she is visible to Dorian. Uh, Quickly. As we... <laughs> what do you see in Dorian? Grab the silverware. I need to kill her. <laughs> as we roll for initiative. Would those of us in the uh, in Scrooge's room be hearing this commotion by now? Yeah. Well, you guys, I'll say, have made your way at least into here. Okay. Um, because Dorian did say he was rallying everyone as he was running in. 
Yeah. Paul Bunyan's just standing in front of the door. Babe has not moved. Yeah. We're, Actually, we're a no, problem. There's, there's a little bit of uh, like plant I'll material that I'll Babe has been chewing you. on. I'll squeeze by you. Can I squeeze by you? I yeah, just nobody can pass. I got so many fucking right animals. In. Can you hear me now? <laughs> What's your little yes. mouse's name again? Uh, my mouse's name is Whitey. Whitey. Whitey easily gets past. Yeah. I feel like... Is that Rachel leaving and coming back? Yes. Can you hear me yeah, now? Yeah, because we didn't yeah, respond. We and uh, okay. so she's leaving and coming back. What happened? Nothing, nothing. You okay. died, unfortunately. Oh, God. I hate it when that happens, huh? Oh, oh, jeez. <laughs> Ending. I think everybody's on the initiative, right? I think Brendel is the only one who isn't. Sorry, sorry, I had to deal with the dog. That's fine. Sorry about that. All right. <laughs> Grendel is still shaken. Uh, as we cut to Tarzan. Tarzan, you don't know what Dorian is talking about, but I bet Dorian's pointing and be like, oh, he's been yelling, right? Yeah. Oh. And firing, right? <laughs> he fired his gun. And he fired and his gun. fork. Just hanging out. Oh. He said there's the fork, like, like floating in the air out of her like we can't see her but just a fork floating or did dorian let go of the fork um yeah i mean i assume he is not used to stabbing people with forks so all right you saw dorian definitely stab something in the air uh and there is a fork floating i'll say for this first turn there is going to be a, a fork tur uh floating in the air Okay, what kind of dishes are on the table? Uh, there is a lot of porcelain plates. There is a silver platter. Um, there is also obviously silverware. So there's like knives, forks. Oh, sorry. I mean, like, uh, is any of the food reminiscent of something Tarzan would have had in the jungle? Oh yeah, there's like rotten bananas. Oh. Uh, rotten <laughs> peaches. Rotten or fermenting? <laughs> rot. Okay. They are definitely All right. Rot. Well, then he's not going to be You will get super sick if you eat Then him. he 100% sees the fork and is focused on that, and he whips out Excalibur and, uh, I guess, jumps on the table, not minding what he steps on. And he'll make a swing with Excalibur. Mm -hmm. uh, a 13. Uh, unfortunately... These are going to be at disadvantage because you don't actually see the thing. Oh, let's see if I get a, a nat one. Nope. Gotcha. But they will still hit. Uh, oh, the AC hit? is very low. Nice. Yep. So, eight. Eight. As you whew, swipe across it, uh, you feel like you hit something. Uh... Dorian, you see this little, this young uh, ghost girl pissed. Uh, and with a bonus action, I'm going to swiftly kick. Seven. I'll go ahead and use my savage attacker on that to reroll the damage. Well. Hold on. Oh, it's only seven. As you swiftly kick, you don't hit anything. Oh. As your foot goes whoop, through whatever it was you hit previously. Oh, okay. <clears throat> and, uh... That's it for Tarzan. Dr. Watson. Dr. Watson is going to run over gorilla style as he's gonna get up here and seeing where the floating fork is he's going to grab fork saw or like silverware off the table and then using an improvised weapon he's just gonna aim for where the other fork is and 
try to hit. Would All you right. like me to roll a disadvantage check? Yes. Okay, disadvantage on a deck roll. Let's do eight. An eight will unfortunately miss. Uh, you feel like All you right. miss whatever it is. That ends me. All right. This uh, specter is pissed at you, Dorian, turns to Tarzan and reaches out, touching Tarzan. Tarzan, I need you to make a wisdom save. All right. Uh, normal or disadvantage? Uh, this is normal. All right. 17. 17. As you're swiping, you feel like, oh, you're about to go into a flashback of your past. But the adrenaline is keeping that from happening as you're able to huh, shake yourself off from it. Um, you are going to see that uh, four move. Uh, it is going to move down and over here. Uh, as we cut to Paul Bunyan. Oh! Paul. He goes, hey, hey, guys, you, uh, you're all in the way. <laughs> I wish you'd get the fuck all out the of the way. The fucking barn is like <laughs> in front of Paul Bunyan. <laughs> There's a fucking barnyard in here. Oh, I bet that room stinks. <laughs> Sorry, babe. Oh, it's, <laughs> it smelled so bad. <laughs> babe, get in there and, uh, and uh, you know, show them what for. Bay, Bay huffs off. offended and then looks like begrudgingly. We'll go do what you say. Uh, and then, <laughs> Babe stands at the door here because that's as far as Babe can go. I will uh, say if Babe does that, I don't think anybody can really get in the room except for Grendel who can squeeze. Oh, I know. All right. Bay is like <laughs> oh, taking over here. <laughs> I'm big boned, guys. And that's her. <laughs> Dorian. Ah. Uh, I'm going to chase after it and grab another fork and jump up on it. Well, no, no, no. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Dorian's going to grab another fork and go around the table to try to stab this thing again. <laughs> Dorian will. Oh. That will hit. Another 19. Another 5. Another 5 as you stab it again with another fork. A salad fork. As she sort of cries out, ah, why I'm trying to help you all. Can any of us hear that? Uh, no, that it's just Dorian. Dorian. Dorian Gray, do you not wish to give up your fortune so that you may become a better person? No. <laughs> <laughs> of course not. <laughs> of course not, you fucking fool. Yeah. This <laughs> <laughs> fucking commie. <laughs> they got to Johnny Appleseed <laughs> watching this fucking thug <laughs> alive. <laughs> Try to squeeze their way through. I know when something's pointless. <laughs> As he takes a bite of an apple and leans, leans against the wall and ends his turn. All right. I imagine it's like Paul Bunyan is pushing Babe, like through the thing. It's just, Do it. just break the whole wall down. Yeah. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> Do little. All right, let's see here. Your um, smaller animals could get through. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I'm, I think I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to say, with my bonus action, I can, I will say, Polynesia, get in there, and she's going to fly. Hold on, let me pull her up. I got a lot, got a lot of animals. Yeah. Uh, 50, oh, no. 50 foot foot movement, uh, flying fly speed. So she's gonna she's gonna get to here. Does she see anything to try and peck? 
Um, she sees a bunch of people, uh, like, <laughs> she sees a bunch of people swinging at something. Um, actually, hold on, give me one sec. Prime is the wild one. Yes, okay. So, do will. Polynesia can see the ghost. Oh, yeah. She sees All right. This young specter. Uh, she's going to. Actually, uh, she's going to use her bonus action to. Oh, not to, not to the GM. To use mimicry uh, to mimic the ghost and, and mockingly, like, be like. That? Don't you want to be poor? That? And then she's going to use, <laughs> she's gonna use her beak attack. Uh, not with advantage, though, I guess. It's just a nine. So. A nine will miss, unfortunately. <laughs> Don't you want to be poor? <laughs> Don't you want to be poor? As we get Grendel. Does Doodiddle have any movement left? I love that picture you made, Rachel. It's hilarious. <laughs> I don't do that. I, that's not what I do with the sheep. <laughs> that's not what I do. Does, uh... <laughs> <laughs> and a new crime just got added to the list. <laughs> hold on, do hold little, on. Does Doodle have any movement left? A do little, a do little. I'm pretty sure does. Hold on, but not too much because I was standing like right here. So I would, I would have like five feet of. Yeah. Grendel, Grendel is standing here. He's got blood all over his, dripping down his maw. <laughs> he'll look at you and he'll scream, "Do diddle, get out of the way!" And he's gonna start sprinting towards you. Uh, uh, dripping down your maw is Tiny Tim still alive? Tiny, Tiny Tim, Tim is is on his back, <laughs> clutching on for dear life. In fact, uh, Grendel will say, "Hold on, Tim." All right, sir. And Grendel is going to dash. He's going to dash up these stairs and jump and smash into this wall. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, let me find the appropriate thing. Is it... It's not that one. I think it's the top of it, but yeah, on your list of them. Oh, yeah, it sure is. All very, yeah. All right. Grendel, I need a strength save and throw. Okay. Oh, my God. He rolled a seven. Oh, as, no. as you oh, no. jump forward. That, that was supposed to be so cool. <laughs> <laughs> Roll 2d6. That's how we'll determine what exactly happens. The wall. <laughs> oh, this character is cursed. He's rolled so many ones. He's, All he's, right. He has had a bad <laughs> string of luck. All right, 2d6. Yeah. Oh, God. Okay, Grendel. You rah, and Tiny Tim goes, "Oi, sir!" And there's a wall. And when he does, he like sits up and pushes your head down, so it kind of like throws off your your jump, and you smash into the wall. Fox, behind you, you see Grendel's head, boom, through the wall. Um, as Grendel, Grendel, you are now restrained as your head is stuck in this wall. Oh. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been so cool. All right. It still is. <laughs> um, well, uh, I've Grendel. made my action, so. Grendel, you do not see a young girl. You see what looks like a will-of-wisp uh, floating in this spot. OK. It's just like kind uh, of a glowing orb. Yes, it's like a glowing bluish orb with these sort of like sparkling around it. 
All right. Um. So your head's stuck. Yes. <laughs> yes, not my greatest moment, but uh, not my worst either. <laughs> <laughs> and I, th I think that that ends his turn. I don't think he has any cool bonus actions to do. <laughs> Fox, you are sort of taken aback by Grendel's head smashing through the wall. Fox is going to look at Grendel first, and he's going to say, you know, Grendel, your head looks a lot better on a wall. <laughs> uh, Grendel will spit blood at Fox. <laughs> <laughs> He's just laughing. Um, so I do have a question. Can my dog sense the ghost, and does that in any way negate my disadvantage? Um, it does not, but uh, your dog does sense it, so it is looking at it. Okay. Um, Fox is going to go up to the table. He'll grab a piece of silverware, and he will also stab towards the area that Dorian has been stabbing. Right. With this Ah, uh, oops. Roll. Uh, six. Uh, a six will miss. Okay, so it just passes through. Yep. Okay. And that'll be his turn. Actually, you know what? I'll try to bite with the dog and see if the dog's bite does anything. All right. Bite. 18. An 18 does hit. And the dog's bite does deal five damage. However, it cannot be knocked prone. So okay. that part of it doesn't matter. Um, but your dog seems to bite at something before sort of dropping back down. Oh, interesting. Okay. That'll be turn. All right. Uh, at this point, that uh, fork does fall off of the ghost. Okay. Uh, and she is very, very, very pissed. Um, and at the top of the order, I need everybody who's around her, uh, except for the animals, to make uh, wisdom saves. As she lets out a horrible wail. Is that uh, just adjacent DM? Jesus. Yes. It's just adjacent to her. I'm guessing one does not pass. <laughs> no. <laughs> Tarzan's uh, unfortunately does not quite make it. And then Dorian. Just gonna drop Tarzan. Daddy, you here? Oh, sorry, I was getting the glass of wine. What's up? Uh, she has let off a horrible wail. She uh -oh. is Data. Wisdom. Yes. Okay, sorry about that. And cheers. Red Fox is a paladin, right? Ah, a ranger. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, we're going to cut back to a memory. Red Fox, as you swipe out uh, wildly, um, we find you sitting in a cabin, your uh, fork clanking against an empty plate. You haven't eaten in days, having gotten lost in the uh, northern expanse. Uh, finding yourself in an abandoned cabin without food, your stomach aches with hunger. What was your mistake? Probably venturing out not properly prepared. And you will never forget that pain. Tarzan, as you are standing there, you are hunched over in an abandoned tent, one that is wrought with age, two skeletons that you were told were your parents uh, lay there. Okay. At a certain moment, what, oh yeah, what runs through Tarzan's mind? That was what I got. Uh, he's just thinking mother, father, why and it's at that you point, abandoned me <laughs> in that pain you again 
feel a sharp slash across your back as you have been attacked by a jaguar. Uh, we cut to Dorian. Dorian. Uh. You are uh, writing a paper. Your favorite butler next to you. Your father is standing over you. What's the answer to the equation, Dorian? Click as he cocks his revolver back. Oh, <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Three, 3X. There is a brief pause for another click. Well done, Dorian. You, you get to keep your butler this time. Oh, thank God. <laughs> As uh, everyone who fails takes nine points of psychic damage. Oh man, Tarzan's just barely up. Uh, as it's Tarzan's turn. Am I able to see her now or no? Uh, you are not. Okay. Uh, the the uh, thing has fallen out of her. I assume I still have a vague sense of where she is though, since she oh, kind of oh. walked over there, right? Hold on. I'm very sorry. You two who failed can see her. Okay. I'm trying to help you confront your past. For fuck's sake. <laughs> Tarzan, no cry. <laughs> A 12 will hit. And uh, I'm gonna need Savage Attacker. I'm gonna do a Savage Attacker, so oh. for eight. Oh, two more, all right. As you slice across her, oh, fuck. It's okay to cry. And uh, I'm just gonna kick whatever dish is in, in between us at her for my bonus action. I'm assuming it'll miss. <laughs> yes, this thing just, click, click, click. well, they do hit her, but like not in any way that would harm her. No cry. Tarzan. Uh, Dr. Okay. Watson. Tarzan Dr. is Watson. having a real emotional moment right now. As, as Dr. Watson is going to move past Tarzan awkwardly behind, because he's a big monkey on this table. As where Tarzan just aims, I will also aim with another silver piece of silverware I have in my hands. All right, as, these will be at disadvantage because you don't see the thing. As I got an 11. An 11 will barely miss as it sort of ducks out of the way. As I do not see what you gentlemen are aiming towards. What are we gathering around? What are you hitting? A ghost. As we cut to her, she is going to turn to Tarzan. Uh, reaching out, oh, no. grabbing him in in his face. I need a wisdom <laughs> save. All right, zipper tires, man. Oh. This. oh, a 17 will pass. And she goes, it's okay to cry. That's a <laughs> perfectly normal human emotion. Tarzan just starts wailing and erupting in tears. <laughs> He's going to drop Tarzan. to his knees and just start crying <laughs> and all the rotten food. She, she goes, see, wasn't that no. not, see, wasn't that fine? Tarzan, no. <laughs> Tarzan cry. <laughs> Tar Mother, I'm gonna my, father. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put my big monkey hand on Tarzan's back. There, there, good lad. It is all right. Let it out. Whatever sort of thing, Jobs. You shell shock your feeling. Okay. Oh. And she tur <laughs> She turns to Dorian and goes, we'll get to you in a second, because damn. Uh, <laughs> she, <turn> oh, <laughs> she turns to Fox. Um, okay. And with her second action, is going to touch him. Okay, now for you. And I need a wisdom save. Oh, God. Because she has reached half health, so she can do this twice. My wisdom is still zero. A 12. 
All right. Your stomach aches as you <laughs> see her. Uh, she is now with you in this memory. <laughs> and she goes, you come out here to the wilderness because you're alone. You want to be alone. Why is that? I'm out here to the wilderness because I'm good at what I do. Just made a mistake this time. She leans in, staring at you with this piercing glare. You know that's not true. Look a little deeper. You're He's going to lean six. into her as well, oh. like oh. directly looking at her and just say, I don't think you understand the beauty of the wilderness. And he'll just leave oh. it at that. <laughs> You are going to take six points of psychic damage as you feel like she is sort of reaching into your mind. Six points of psychic um, damage? Okay. Yes. Um, she is then going to move uh, through you and to the other side. Uh, which will provoke from Dorian if he has a fork still. Yeah. Well... Can I grab one with a reaction or no? You have. Grab they're, they're, they're nearby. Okay, I'm going to do a grab stab. Does 13 hit? A 13 will hit. Uh, all right, that's uh, three damage. Three damage. As you stab her, I'll say that's the reason she kind of moves through uh, Fox here, to get away from you for a moment. Uh, are, we, are we stabbing ghosts with silverware? Because yes. it's silver. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they actually were silver back in the day. Well, as Bay and Paul, Bay just kind of is turned a little to you, Paul. Is like, like she doesn't want to go in there because there's not that much room. Oh yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Paul goes, go on, babe. You didn't do much at the the last house and Dorian's house babe gets a, a red look in her eye and you hear a huh? this babe the sound of madness and uh, runs around and gives this ghost the horns All right, babe sort of doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, this is a tight room um, unlike the previous room the vaulted ceiling is not here so Bay is going to be making this at disadvantage because she just does not have the room to do this. Okay. Steps on really poor Tarzan. Poor Tarzan. Yeah. Tarzan's uh, weeping. A 13 will hit. As uh, Bay comes in and just kind of... Oh, wait, no. I roll a disadvantage. So one more time. Oh. Okay, still wet. As boom, Bay swings around, smashing a good chunk of this uh, beautiful oak table. Uh, and uh, a bunch of silverware and glasses just shatter. It's a fucking mess in here now. Oh. <laughs> good job, babe. I, I believe you did a good job. <laughs> Do you just see, like, debris and stuff getting flown from side to side? <laughs> Paul Bunyan dashes over here. Oh, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. He squeezes, of course. Uh, you know, maybe steps on this parrot's tail feather just a little bit. Sorry. Smashing the table as you come in. Uh-huh. And, uh, you know, he, he goes, oh, this is not a very large house, huh? And ends his turn. <laughs> Dorian, you have had a bull and a giant man step over you. Ah. Ah, you know what? Gr grab some forks, and Dorian's just gonna start handing forks to everybody. <laughs> All right. He's he's gonna take a step back. He doesn't he doesn't want to think about his father anymore. Yeah. Paul Bunyan, they're like toothpicks to you. Not even. <laughs> Appleseed, you see, finally they have made their way through. Um, actually, I need Paul Bunyan to roll 2d6 real quick. Oh. Okay. 
10, all right. As you have squeezed your way through here, you have deftly gone through these without uh, in, uh, messing with any of the structural integrity of the house. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, Johnny Appleseed is just gonna go. I don't know what's going on. I'm hearing a bunch of crying and stuff. Man, that sucks. As he takes another bite of the apple. Yeah, man. It's rough in there. Yeah, it sucks. I don't do ghosts. Wait, no, uh, ghosts don't exist. Yeah, they don't. <laughs> nah, they don't exist, man. Yeah. As that ends Johnny's, Johnny's turn. Because everything goes to the great apple. Yeah, exactly. So why would anyone not want to go back to the great apple tree? Exactly. Does the great <laughs> apple ever send anyone away? Like if they let a, a particularly inorganic life? That sounds like heretic talk coming from a heretic. Doodle is just asking. <laughs> I want to learn more about the great apple. I don't know what happens. You accept people. the preaching of the great apple. You don't want to ask questions. <laughs> Doolittle's gonna, do gonna shake his head. And he's gonna... Wait, it, oh, oh, sorry. Would did you? Still oh, Doolittle's right there. I'm, I didn't yeah. realize Doolittle was right there. Yeah. Well, I was shouting across <laughs> the hall. Uh, oh, okay. He's gonna walk up here uh, and sort of peek in through this door. Uh, it's a clusterfuck. He... Cluster 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 there is there is a broken dining room table. Glasses and silverware are everywhere, bent out of shape, just sort of all over. And you're not sure if that was the fight or if that was just Bay and Paul coming into this room. <laughs> uh, I'm going to use my. I already told. Um, I already told. What's his animal thing? Polynesia to attack, right? So she's on autopilot now, I believe. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to use my bonus action this time to call Dab Dab to the scene. Dab Dab is going to fly in as well. Uh, can Dab Dab see the ghost, or does Dab Dab not know what's going on? No, Dab Dab can see the ghost. All right, Dab Dab is going to come to here and attempt to uh, beak attack the ghost. All right, that's going to hit. Hey, hey, uh, this is going to surprise no one. It does one bludgeoning one damage. One damage. It's... <laughs> wah, wah. And it's like flapping and making all this noise. Come oh, on, oh. come on, I'll get you. Come here, come here. <laughs> and I also am going to attack with Polynesia because she's on attack mode. All right, Tarzan's confronting his feelings. <laughs> A 14. <laughs> 14 will hit, so another one damage. Another one damage. Uh, which is probably... Well, actually, even if it's halved, it's still one, because it's rounded up, right? So It is. Yeah, I'm doing that damage. And uh, I'm going to stay in the doorway. I feel like I don't want to go in here. It seems like people are like losing their minds in here. <laughs> Grendel, your head is sticking out of the wall. All right, yeah, he is restrained. What can he do, DM? Um, you can attempt a strength check to try and uh, break your way out of it, or if you can think of some other creative way of doing it. Is that an action to do so? Uh, it would be. All right. Um... Damn, I, I, uh, I, don't, I don't think there's... <clears throat> I'll say, here, here, I'll give you this. You Because you have that freaky squeeze ability... Oh, that's a good you point. Can, I can squeeze through small space. You can spend all of your movement to move one square forward, to basically squeeze through the hole. Oh, he looks down at the duck and does not <laughs> want... Surprisingly, I mean, nobody knows this, but he does not want to crush the duck. The oh. duck is flying, I believe. That's what you said he was doing, uh, right, Dulu? Oh, uh, yeah, the, all the birds are flying. Yeah, so there's room underneath it. I'll tell you, <laughs> this might be even better, okay. DM. 
uh, I don't know, maybe you will allow... Can he squeeze his arm, like, just his shoulder through? Yeah, easily. So, <laughs> yeah, you... he goes in, he moves his, his hand into the hole and squeezes his shoulder and a bit of his torso out. Like, stuck uh, in a sweater, basically. Yeah. He looks at Fox, straight at Fox, and goes, Where? Uh, Fox will definitely point to the ghost. Yeah, and you see again that will of wisp uh, in the direction Fox is pointing. Oh, that's right. You can see kind of the will of wisp. Um, Grendel will cough once loudly, and as he he does, a portion of the silver dust of purity. Will fall upon his hand. Yeah, because he had it. He ate it. As your your hand sparkles with silver dust. And he will recklessly take a punch through these two flying birds at the Will O Wisp. All right. Um. 17 will hit. Oh, cool. Okay, so he doesn't have disadvantage? Uh, well, even if it was a 13, you'd hit. It's, right. it's AC is very low. So this is the regular damage. And then... <laughs> ooh, nice. And then a... Uh, uh, slash R... 1... D6... Nice. As you slam into it, uh, Grendel, <laughs> you feel yourself hitting something. Uh, as she goes, come on, you don't want personal growth! <laughs> Before she poofs <laughs> into spectral dust. Uh, you Why see that... everyone want to remind me about my mother? <laughs> As it, <laughs> <laughs> the spectral dust boom, breaks off. The chain shatters as that spectral flame whoo, flies off back down the hall past you, Appleseed, and towards uh, what you can assume returning itself back to Scrooge. Um, Man, that was and a strong gust of wind. When that happens, the lights in this room mm, turn on. Uh, here, here, in here. Actually here, but you guys aren't. Tarzan regains enough composure just in time before accidentally lighting the tablecloth on fire with his torch. <laughs> <laughs> Tiny Tim's on his back and he's like, did we win? Tiny Tim is actually bat, uh, patting your back uh, to try and like help you cough up because he thinks you're coughing at stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Grendel will do uh, this. He'll um, smash the wall open with his sieging impact. Yeah, as you... <laughs> Break your west uh, the rest of the way through this wall. Well, that is one down. Um, and as that specter dissipated, there is a clanking noise <laughs> as something falls on the ground. It is a lantern. A strange one with green glass, inside of which is a equally strange ethereal green flame. Uh, and it's a blackened iron lantern uh, with a symbol on the top of it that is uh, similar to that dragon symbol you found earlier uh, on the book, The Order of the Dragon. You guys have found... Uh, Ghost Bane Lantern. 
Oh, that's Ooh. nice. Well, who wants the bobble? I mean, I'll take it if nobody wants it. Yeah, I've already um, got the key, so somebody else should take that one. I did stab the ghost. Yeah, you, the you house, earned it. You earned it. The house creaks under this change. You hear and almost feel in the air something shifting and changing. That cold wind of the past now brings yourself to the present. Um, Johnny Appleseed, up the stairs, you see that shimmer that was keeping people from going to the top of it slowly disappear. Um, as the just general feel of this place has changed. No, I bet this place would be a lot nicer if it had an apple tree right where those statues were. Tarzan need rest. Uh, you oh, guys gonna try drink to... your juice, you great buffoon. Tarzan's gonna go sit we in the chair next to hunt. Tarzan's gonna go sit in the chair next to Ebenezer. Alright. <laughs> Don't you don't you have a healing potion, man? Yeah, but that's just one healing potion. That could very easily not net me enough hit points to ha to survive a single hit. It's like two d eight plus three, so it could easily just be five. Um, are you guys going to attempt to take a short rest? Let's take a short rest. Yeah, it would also be what nice room? to have key points back. Do you get key points back on a short rest? Yep. Mm -hmm. Well then, yeah, we should take a short rest. I'm going to roll some hit dice. <clears throat> Maybe. What's Does Grendel have time to open this door? Uh, Grendel does. Um, I will say, as Grendel goes up to this room, uh, he can make a perception check. Oh, okay. Is he good at that? I don't even know. 18. You reach out to go open this door, but as you do, you hear something, a clang. And then what sounds like shuffling coming from the other room. There is something on the other side of this door. Mm, curiosity. What is it, sir? I don't know. That's the point. But wisdom should win out. We are in a group. And must follow the group thing. But I thought you said that we should deal with things head on. Like when yes. you ripped the bull's head off. Yes, and how I slammed my head through a wall. Yes. Sometimes it is best to take it easy. All right, take it easy. Don't listen to your mom. Because she can be wrong sometimes. And deal with things head on. Yes. <laughs> and take what is yours. And take what is yours. Without asking. Power is a thing to be taken, dear. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> so... Where is everybody going to short rest if you're going to decide to? Or are some people going to short rest and other people aren't? Uh, I suppose Grendel will short rest. He doesn't want to, but it's the smartest thing for his character to do. 
for his health points to do. I think the best uh, option is going to go Char rest yeah. this table here. Charizan's right. going to go s sleep next to that shitty old man. I, oh, it's I'm his own shit, isn't it? No, it's dirt for, that for, Tarzan put in there. No, it's not dirt. It's it's Tarzan's ass wipings. It's, oh, like, oh. Ripped up, it's like ripped up book pages with shit on. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, that's what I thought. <laughs> I'm going to go sit next to Red Fox because he's the only one that seems the most sane out of all of y'all. <laughs> Grendel will stretch and rest atop this uh, tiger. Tiger. Uh, with, with Tim on his back, I guess. <laughs> Take a little nap before we go find my dad. Story is just playing the piano? Yep. Okay. A nice melody for, for everyone. Extra relaxing. Mm -hmm. All right. As you all short rest, nothing happens. It goes by perfectly safe. Uneventful. Is it still Christmas Eve? It is still Christmas Eve. Will we see Santa Claus? Actually, uh, Appleseed and Grendel, I need you both to make perception check. Ugh, not great this time. Uh, all right, Grendel, you are fast asleep. Um, but Appleseed, you hear it up the stairs somewhere. A low laugh. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> As a uh, tiny Tim looks at you, Appleseed goes. That's Santa. Here, you want an apple? Or a Christmas treat? No, can't. My mom says I'm not supposed to eat them because they're bad for my teeth. Tim, um, trust your mother on this one. Wait, wait, wait. Grendel is asleep. You cry. <laughs> Yes. Oh, yeah, Grendel is straight asleep. Yeah, we, we have yeah. established that. How healthy is this child look? I mean, he's looked very sickly. He's a sickly little child. He needs the vitamins. Crunch. He needs the vitamins. My dad says vitamins are bad for you. Because he read it in a paper once. It um, is Britain. And I don't brush my teeth, so don't try to make me do it. Johnny's going to try to shove an apple out his throat. <laughs> no, we're not going to eat an apple. Stop. As Grendel, you are awakened to Johnny yeah, Appleseed. No, he's not. Okay. <laughs> no, he's not. That was a joke. He's not. No. I'm not going to kill a child. <laughs> oh, you're not going to? That's okay. No. That's all no. right. No. Yeah, Grendel will. <laughs> I, Grendel I, will. Yeah, I don't want to ruin Grendel's meal. I'm waiting. No, here's the thing. This is Christmas. Grendel. Yeah, oh, fuck. Okay, yeah, okay. Grendel. Make a constitution save. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> Grendel just Krampus. Grendel. Hanging out with Tiny Tim. You, you've been feeling kind of strange. You've sort oh. of... Uh, Grown don't attached grow, to the boy a little bit. Don't grow my heart two sizes, please. As, as Grendel, your heart begins to hurt. <laughs> oh! Oh! <laughs> in, in his sleep, Grendel takes his one arm and starts, he's totally flat asleep, but he will punch his heart back into submission. As Grendel wakes himself up as if, you know, like when you have heartburn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you... Grendel, what, you okay? What are you doing? Describe what you're doing. <laughs> Grendel in his sleep has writhed sideways and started uh, punching himself in the heart without knowing and is waking up to that. 
<laughs> Ooh. It wakes up the Johnny burn, Appleseed. Sir? What did you say, Johnny Appleseed? You okay, Grendel? <laughs> He'll loom tall over the the Apple Man. Apple Man. Yeah, I can get behind that name. This is none of your business. I am well, simply I mean... having possibly fatal heart palpitation. Ah, well, let me know. I could put an apple seed in your corpse and grow a tree. Mm, fascinating. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you're okay, sir. And as Tiny Tim says that, you feel a little twinge in your heart. Ow! <laughs> you okay? Grendel will take the tiger and throw it across the room. Yes. I think he's. I, I think he's fine. Fine. He starts to move into this room. And you smells, you go into this smells room. The smell and he leaves. You see a pile of shit. I guess. I hate this place. I do too. I do too. <laughs> Johnny will look at the child. You should go follow him. <laughs> Tarzan. <laughs> what is it? Tarzan comes. I need Tarzan to make a constitution save now. Oh, God. Based on what you've drawn here in the corner. Let's all draw a tip to do it. That's the poop emoji, yeah. <laughs> is one of you Night Sight Studio in the Twitch chat? <laughs> <laughs> it ain't me. <laughs> Listen, I'm gonna need you can try to avoid this con save as much as you want. I need one con save. Hey, I got a 20. Tarzan. I got the constitution of the jungle right here. <laughs> you got the constitution of the jungle. You all see Tarzan come out of this room. He's like sweating. He's like bent over. And Tarzan, you don't know why, but you feel like you should tell people not to go in there. Like you have, you have desecrated a room in a way that is only appropriate for the king of the jungle. Yeah, I'll just kick open oh. this door and just be like, "Do not go in there." <laughs> <laughs> you have you have made sure that no specters or ghosts are gonna go in there. It's how I'm protecting Scrooge. Okay, <laughs> I'm doing my <laughs> best. <laughs> <laughs> Dorian, you have closed the door, I imagine. Yes. It's been closed. <laughs> um, Dorian, as you are um as you are sitting here playing the piano, occasionally you notice some chains sort of by you. Um and then move away out of the room. Uh, whatever is connected to them is moving around, at least above you. Ah, okay. Um, occasionally it's directly above you, then it seems to move out of the room, come in from a different part, move back out, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, as everyone has taken a, a nice short rest. <laughs> a big Grendel dump and a short to... rest. Grendel yeah. will talk to the baboon. Oh, so, do it. friend. Do we prepare to the upper chambers? He shrugs. Probably. Right. Doolittle, I need a wisdom save. Uh oh. And this is not. That should for be wise. You. I'm be just wise. making it for something else. I'm rolling the dice. 12. All right, with a 12. Uh, uh, let's see. He has gone. Uh, Gub Gub has gone over to you. A do little. 
Yes, pig. Uh, Jip wants to know if he can go in, if he's allowed to go in the other room to eat fecal matter. Oh, I suppose that's all right. Jip, Jip just fucking runs, tackles past Tarzan. <laughs> 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 There's a lot of poop in there, huh? That's a big one. He, it's a thing he does from time to time. I think it's a, a canine thing. Sure. Did we uh, beat all the ghosts? Says Dab Dad. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think so. All right, we can leave, right? I mean, I feel like me, I feel like the birds of this group have really kind of put together a lot. <laughs> yeah, the birds have been doing good. You guys have been uh, my my all star on my team so far. Yeah, so we should get a break on the next one. Yeah. Now, now we'll see, I, I consider myself the brains of the group. Well. He blinks at two different intervals. <laughs> I gotta say, I, I, I don't know that I... Well, actually, no, pigs are smart. You know, all animals are equal, but some animals are more equal than others. Oh, I'll, I'll accept that. In the background, you see uh, Chi-Chi give a thumbs up. Chi-Chi knows you're talking about Chi-Chi. Yeah, talking about monkeys. We're talking about monkeys. But, uh, <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what, uh, Gub-Gub, since you've been uh, such a good guy... I'll let you lead. I'll let you lead us up the stairs. Uh, good. Can I have one of those uh, boomsticks? Um, do we have extra? Do we have extra guns, guys? Do we have a pig? Uh, a gun that a pig could use? I only have my walking cane. Are you I'll take the pig that. Up there? Yeah, I figured I'd send the pig up there. I'll go up with her. He's got a boomstick. He'll take you up with the boomstick. Ah. If he I'll, feels will... like he can't hold it, I will hold it for him. I, I uh, will follow suit, Red Fox. I would like to make a... I would like to make a... animal handling check to see if I think Gub Gub can handle a, <laughs> a, a pistol. Okay, yeah, make that check. The number no, isn't loading for me. <laughs> oh, fucking no, he can't. He's a goddamn pig, Brad. <laughs> why does he? Why does he think that he can? He has no. How's he gonna pull He's the trigger? He's an idiot. He has two intelligence. Uh, <laughs> I've seen some pretty stupid people with guns, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> but they have opposable thumbs. <laughs> He's not just because he's called a pig doesn't mean he's a fucking police officer, Brad. <laughs> well, he could be. He could be, I suppose. Fox deputizes a pig. <laughs> <laughs> As you head up the stairs, I will point. Uh, Does that bring everybody over? Yeah. yeah. I gotta bring Gub Gub over there. Are we all just going up the stairs, I guess? I mean... If you would like. I'll bring up the rear, though. Come on, Jip. Stop eating that shit. Let's go. Paul Bunyan is probably back to his normal size. Which is still large. Which is still large. As you guys make your way upstairs, um, again, that 
uneasy feeling is still in the air. I love this absolute clusterfuck, by the way, of just characters. Uh, <laughs> So this is animals. Gonna, I'm trying to make the game go by super fast. I'm doing the best I can over here, fellas. Um, <laughs> as you guys make your way up, it's this um, strange a sort of entranceway. There's rooms and hallways uh, basically in every shape and size all around you. Um, and on display are a bunch of strange animals uh, heading up the stairs. Uh, you will see directly what looks like a very large rabbit with a horn sticking out like a unicorn. Um, what looks like this sort of smallish uh, horse with long legs, but this huge mane um, that is a sort of teal blue with these large tusks coming out of each side of its mouth. Um, and then opposite of the railway over here, there is what looks like a mammoth skeleton, and you can just make out the, the edge of an actual, a very large fox uh, down the hall, around the corner. Um, and I guess the best thing to do would probably be roll initiative, right? We'll just kind of go down the line. Yeah. Tars, Paul Bunyan, Doctor, Watts, Dorian Gray. Oh Do man! Little. All right, Fox, you're the first one up, which makes sense. You're the first one who went up the stairs. Perfect. Um, he will ready an attack action before approaching the store and trying to open it. It is very dark up here. Uh, as you go over to this door, your key hums as you hear it unlock. Perfect. I'll uh, push the door open and step through. Push the door open. You see. Change the book. Uh, what looks like a a young woman's room. Uh, there's a bunch of sort of very ornate hats. Uh, there's a large peacock uh, stuffed and sitting up on a banister. Uh, there looks to be uh, a, a desk with like a large mirror, a ribbon with, a, with what looks like a diary, a mirror. And um, over here on the bed is a dress that is laid out um sort of strangely in the middle of the room uh but one thing that is very apparent is that this room is extremely dusty it does not seem like anyone has come in here in a very long time would a ghost interrupt dust what's the check for that um or like the understanding would that be arcane arcane would probably be the closest equivalent Three. Uh, you have no idea. You have very rarely dealt with uh, ghosts Actors. and dust. Um, is that a door over there? Uh, it is. Okay. Um, Fox will head towards that. Mm -hmm. Not bothering to check under the bed because there is a lot of dust, so he assumes no one's hiding under it. Mm -hmm. Um. I think that's my 30 feet of movement, or do I have more? Oh, that's your that's your movement. Okay, perfect. Oh, actually, I guess I'm back here. Oh, oh so you right sort here. of head towards the door. Okay, then I'll be the end of my turn. Shaggy came right. with me. Okay, uh, Apple C. Yeah, uh, Johnny is. Yeah, 
I'm just gonna move over here and open up this door. Alright, you open this door. Um, this one is not barred by some sort of spectral force. Uh, and you see what looks like a a, a guest room. Uh, there's a bunch of writing. Uh, this room is uh, not nearly as dusty as this one that you had walked by. Uh, but it is got a layer of dust on it. Uh, some books are strewn about. There's a large rug in the center. Um, and that is what you see. They'll walk in. Uh, opening the doors into action, right? Uh, no, that's a use object. So uh, he'll investigate this desk if possible. All right. Uh, sort of taking a quick cursory glance uh, of this desk, it appears to be uh, sort of some scribblings uh, of different plans, sort of. Uh, listings of um sort of meetings and and whatnot uh, but not from scrooge um you see that this diary actually is of van helsing oh, that's big me if i could read <laughs> as you cannot read uh it, it is not uh, <laughs> it's not of anything you notice but I will uh, say, yeah, as you look, there is a a strange amulet sitting on this table uh, that has a sort of bull's head as it's the amulet part of it. Me, Johnny will pocket it. <laughs> you pocket it. That's it, Johnny. This. I'm, I'm gonna give you this so you know what it is. Uh, Dr. Doolittle. <laughs> uh, let's see here. All right, I'm going to split the party. I'm going to split the animal party. I'm going to come up the stairs. I need a wisdom save, by the way. Oh. This is how we're determining animal reactions. 14. 14. Okay. So as as you're going up the stairs, um Gub Gub has stopped and he's he's looking wildly side to side. Um as he goes, Oh, oh great heavens! Oh, oh, oh. as he's looking at all these taxidermied animals. Oh, ah! <laughs> oh! It's okay, Gub Gub. It's okay. Ah! <laughs> Too little, we're over our head. No, no, you've got to calm down. I'm going to slap him in the face. <laughs> calm down. Get a hold of yourself. Get a hold of yourself, pig. What if, what if I'm next? You're not going to be next while I'm around. Uh, uh, all right. He's shaking. Calm down, huh? All right. Uh, well, what's what we do now? Well, why don't you go with Fox, as you were supposed to? I'm going to send him uh, this way. Uh, are you sure? Oh he yeah. He walks get in on. the room. And Fox, you hear a pig make a really loud noise as Doolittle, you hear, Oh, good heavens, another one! As he looks at the peacock. <laughs> but so there's a Fox... squealing pig that's blundered yeah. into my room? Uh, yeah, to Fox, yeah to a squealing room. pig. Oh, he'll say, calm down, girl, calm down. Should, oh. I, should I roll an animal handling and see if I can calm her down? You can <laughs> Let's see how this goes. Uh, where is it? Boom. 15. Uh, 15. He feels a little more, a little more uh, comfortable. She feels a little <laughs> more comfortable around you. Oh, oh. It kind of puts its head down and is following you slowly and tentatively. And I'm going to, I'm going to send Chi Chi down this way. I'm going to send 
Jip in with uh, apple seed, and then I'm gonna keep my my uh, my swarm around the top of me over here. All right. And is that it for Doolittle? As he's sort of do- commanding his animals around, uh, Watson. Watson is going to peel around the corner and then go to the store over here. Am I hearing anything? Uh, You hear nothing. All right. Um, I guess same, same first, same as the first as everyone else try to open this door. Uh, You reach out to this door and you are sort of rebuked back by an invisible force. Gentlemen, I seem to be rebuked back to from this door. And I'm gonna, that'll, that'll end me as I just kind of wait for a key. All right. Grendel. <laughs> Grendel <clears throat> winces a little bit as the quiet of the house is, is shattered by Dr. Watson yelling. Yeah. Seems we are splitting up. Oh, this that's a great idea. Of course. What else would you do in a haunted manner? <laughs> and he'll squeeze between everybody here. And I guess he'll make it to here with his movement. And uh, he'll attempt to to kind of fade into the darkness. Sort of slinking. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, night. Uh, Night, man. Uh, Paul Bunyan is hanging out downstairs. He's stuck in the stairwell. (laughs) He's trying to, like, coerce Babe. To get up the stairs. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Grendel is going to slink down the hallway. Do you move at half speed while you're stealth? Uh, I believe so. Now, then he won't, he won't throw a stealth out just yet. All right. Uh, Tarzan. Uh, Tarzan's going to wander... over here with his 40 feet of movement and look at the fox and he's just gonna say red fox uh uh red fox (laughs) you are tarzan is surprised because this fox does have a lot of tails for a normal fox nine of them to be precise does tarzan know that has he seen a fox before or read about them he knows they generally have one okay Mini tail. He's making a mental note of it. That'll be Tarzan. Paul is is still come on, Bay, trying to get Bay up the stairs. Uh, Dorian. All right. Uh. Yeah, I guess Dorian's gonna walk off, or you know, kind of kind of double time it around the corner. Uh, Dorian, as you get to here, I'll say, you do <laughs> notice the chain. Oh. Uh, and it is heading this direction. Oh. Huh. Yeah, I'll I'll go. Guys, there's another another chain over here. And uh that'll be my turn. All right. Fox. All right. Fox, Fox is going to come up here and try to open this door. All right. You whoop, open that door. Revealing a bathroom. Is that is that letter actually there? It is. And is it sealed or is it open? Now it is open. Uh, he'll read it. Reading it. 
I am not going to read the details of it, but it becomes very apparent to Fox that this is a note from a young woman named Fan Scrooge, uh, and it is a suicide note. He'll put it back down. And then, uh, yeah, head back up actually towards Watson, because I think Watson was the one who talked first. I'll uh -huh. use double movement, whatever that is, to get up to here and try to open the door. Head on back up, out of the room. But wait for me! As the pig squeals behind you. <laughs> Am I close enough to open that door? I can't tell if Watson's right in front of it or Um you you are not, unfortunately. Okay, okay. Uh, as you were heading there, Johnny Appleseed. Yep. Johnny Appleseed will get to here and open up this door. All right, you open up this door, revealing another guest bedroom. This one a lot more plain than the one you were in. Good morning. Take a look around. All right, make it an investigation. Yep. Good news. No, oh, that's an insight. I am... Um... Good with these. Investigate. As you look around, um, this room appears to be fairly, fairly Spartan, right? You could tell it's not used very often. Right. Um, and doesn't seem to be for anyone in particular. Right. No one, John, Johnny Strength. All right, do him. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Um,. Doolittle is going to Doolittle himself is going to post up in the hallway and uh, Jip is going to follow Appleseed uh, it looks like Chi Chi is going to Chi Chi is going to follow Dorian <laughs> and, and Gub Gub is going to continue to follow Fox because it seems like they're making good friends. Yeah. Uh, but I think that's going to be that's going to be my turn. Right, I'm, Dr. Splitting, Watson. I'm splitting my party. Excuse me, Sergeant. I will step out of the way so this way that you can proceed with the key as I move out of the way. All right. And we'll say that that gives enough. If you're going to make that your like main action, we'll say he can get up and Unlock the door. Uh, revealing a rather large, uh, ornate room. Uh, this is a fireplace uh, at the end. It seems to be still burning. Um, this room is, I'll say, unusual compared to the rest of the house. Um, there is large maps with tacks and, and red marker through it. Um, there are nets, different tomes and books that look handmade, um, sort of made about a large globe with uh, little pins in it. Uh, and this appears to be some sort of staging room, some sort of like investigation room. Uh, it's, like I said, very out of place from the sort of opulent nature of the rest of the house. And is that for Watson? Uh, yeah. I'll I'll save it so this way, like, if there's a little bit more, I'll proceed in afterwards. All right, Grendel. <clears throat> All right. So Grendel moves forward. Sees Dorian Gray. 
heading to the north. And supposes he'll check the south. Let's see what trouble we can get into. And I think yeah. that's about as far as his mo movement can make it. All right, Tarzan. Tarzan heard Dorian mumbling about chains. <clears throat> so he'll walk up here. Dorian, which way chains? In the room over there. That door perhaps to the left? Should... Yeah. Yeah, perhaps we should light the lantern and head in together. Okay. Tarzan will approach and try to open the door. You approach, and uh, you can touch the door. Is the handle hot? The handle is warm. It's warm? Yes. Dare I say inviting. All right. Uh, I mean, Tarzan feels compelled to open the door. Opening the door. A waft of uh, seasonal uh, sort of nutmeg, uh, hollyhock, the whole shebang, rosemary, blasts you in the face um, as you feel this uh, sort of warm and inviting feeling uh, coming from this this room, and you hear someone, ho, 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 this one will turn out good, ho, ho, ho. Well, it's inviting, and Tarzan has 15 more feet of movement. <laughs> so he's just going to walk toward, I assume this is towards the, yeah. That's his yep. last movement. As you walk in, there is a giant man, jovial, with his chest out. He's as big as Paul Bunyan is. Um, He's painting a, a beautiful Christmas Eve scene. Uh... It looks to be a family uh, with a turkey. Um, in it, you actually recognize one of the figures, The no, actually two of them. One of them is a small child with a crutch, uh, you know as Tiny Tim. The other one is of Scrooge, uh, having brought this large turkey to this house uh, where this feast is about to happen. Oh, this will be a beautiful outcome. Oh. Oh, hello there. You must be... Mm, he kind of looks at you really sternly. Tarzan, I presume. King of the jungle. Yes, me Tarzan. And you? Uh, I am the specter of Christmas present. Uh, I... Don't mean to be awkward in these jovial times, Tarzan but... Tarzan never had Christmas present. Oh, my poor boy. Christmas is a jovial time, a time for fun, laughter, and festivities. And you, having not had it, I, I must say that is uh, troubling. Hmm. He kind of rubs his, his beard. It sound nice. Yes. Uh, but you know that you have been a naughty boy. Tarzan, Tarzan, nice, nice guy. Mmm. You did slay a ghost of Christmas past. Ghost. That's a pretty naughty thing to do. Ghost evil. Ghost. <laughs> We know ghost and jungle, ghost evil. Oh, ghosts are here to help. Oh. Tarzan not Old know. Old man Scrooge is bad. Tarzan not know. Um, no, no hurt Tarzan. Tarzan not know. I would not hurt you. You seem like a good enough lad. It was a misunderstanding, of course. Um, but... You're going to have to do something to make this right, dear boy. 
Tarzan, and he steps Tarzan, closer to you, Tarzan, and he leans down to you. Well, you're gonna have to get that uh, that lantern back. I, uh, you see, we need the soul inside of it so that we can make old Scrooge have a wonderful Christmas, a kind Christmas, as he gestures to this painting of this beautiful scene. Tarzan do, and then Tarzan's just gonna turn around and be like, Dorian, bring lantern, quick. Okay, uh, can I get out of turn? Yeah, well, it is your turn next, so. Oh, okay, perfect. All right, yeah, I'm gonna light the lantern and then walk it over. All right, you light the lantern, and when you do, um, he does have like a, a strange shine to him. Uh, as you come in the room, oh, oh, <clears throat> um, and he's he gets a little like kind of sweaty uh, and steps back a little bit. Uh, now, uh, young Dorian, uh, I was just telling Tarzan here that you, uh, well, you've done a bad thing tonight on Christmas. Mm, what? You slew a ghost of Christmas past, one that was going to have old Scrooge come out of his shell and be a good man for the people who need him. And he gestures to the painting. You uh, know about paintings, do you, and their futures? Well, well, you see, you got hired by somebody who's already tried to kill me to screw with my banker and then I find him passed out, shit his pants and a bunch of ghosts in his house with an and I look at the lantern, even a lantern now now no, no. no, Dorian no. you know that you must scramble a few eggs to get what you want after all and it's all for the greater good of things I yeah. mean, after all, money is not everything, as you should know. You should, you would learn a lot from what Scrooge will learn. By the end of tonight, Scrooge will give up all of his wealth, and he will be a better man for it. Uh, Dorian's gonna yell out the hall, guys. We got, we got another Marxist in here. Come, come ah. quick. I see Fucking you are a, also a greedy man, Dorian Gray. As he stands up, and Dorian, you hadn't noticed because you had kind of like peered out of the room, but he is standing tall and rather imposing as he goes, I think it's about time I give you a present. As he lifts his large wreath and swings it down on you. Uh, I don't suppose I can dodge that or no. Kinda... Uh, a 12. Which oh, may, okay. may... As he swings it, boom! It cracks the ground underneath you. Uh... <laughs> ho, 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 ho. I think we're going to have a lot of fun learning some things about ourselves and emotions. <laughs> 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 we, we begin combat. Uh, this man, unlike the previous thing, is very tangible. Uh, <laughs> Sergeant Fox, you hear a loud bang across the thing as Dorian yells out. What does Dorian yell out? As he's been hit or swung at. Damn. Damn ghost commies. Damn ghost commies. <laughs> uh, Fox will shake his head. He's kind of split between going in and just investigating this room or going over there. Um, it is a fight, though. Uh, so he's at least going to go see what trouble these two have gotten themselves into. Um, but he definitely notes this room and is going to come back to it to investigate if he survives. Um, so I'll take the dash action and... I'll get to there. 
and Shaggy will come with me, obviously. And that'll be my turn. Alright. Johnny Appleseed. You just gotta move there. That's it. Uh, is it for Johnny? Yep, he can only move 60. Alright. Sure. One more thing I need to do. And roll this. All right, there. All right. Uh, oh crap! What happened to the initiative? Uh, wait, how did Johnny get that guy? Oh, um. Anyway, do it. Did I hear about this guy? Like, can we hear him from... You can hear ho, yeah, ho, 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 ho! All right. Uh, well, Chi-Chi's definitely going to go check this out. Uh, along with Tarzan, you know. Our, our eight friends. all my animals around here. But I think Chi Chi is going to poop in his hand. As you want to do. And ready in action to hurl it at this guy if necessary. Alright. Watson. Dashing will get me here sort of dashing down the hall and through the snow. That ends me. All right, Grendel. All right, Grendel hears the commotion. He's very far away. So he'll dash as quickly as he can with Tim on his back. And as he passes Sergeant Fox, he'll throw him a Nice leer. A great, still bloodied smile. Is Tiny Tim with him? Yeah, yes. he's still he's still on his back. Okay. Yay! Oh, it's a, it's, it's Grendel's own blood from earlier. <laughs> oh, Grendel from the wall. <laughs> is, is Santa Claus. Ho ho ho! Hello there, little boy! Ah, oh, Tim. It's time to learn a thing or two about fables. How I love those books. Yes. But they should all burn! <laughs> and I guess Gretel is gonna, gonna rage. Oh! As he moves into the room, his, his uh, left and only hand growing I love, to I love Fable. They're the ones with all the pictures. That's right. The comic book series Fable is entirely in the public domain. <laughs> oh, it is. I guess that's kind of its point, isn't it? That's why it yeah. exists. Yeah. Uh, sorry, then. That's why you can make the big bad wolf uh, act, basically X-Men from Wolverine. Or Wolverine yeah. from X-Men. Uh, Tarzan. I was muted asking questions. Um, <laughs> is, is the Ghost of Christmas Past a creature of CR5 or higher? Or was he it? He is not. The the pass. Oh, he is not. Okay. 
then that won't come into play. Tarzan will say to him, Give Tarzan present, please. Oh, you will get many presents from me, dear boy. Now, now, please. Just give me five seconds. Or six seconds. That's the, that's how I turned it. Wrong answer. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. That's you. Swipe across him with this sword. 21 hits. Yeah, 21 will hit. All right. I'm going oh. to, uh, I'm going to savage attack of that. All right, it's still an eight. All right. And then uh, I'll spend a key point to kick him a couple times. Um, so. And 12 will not, but 16 will. All right, and he doesn't get any reactions until the end of my next turn. All right, as you boom, kick him. And I will, <laughs> I will hide behind this wall. Strategic, you know, tactics. That's Tarzan. Oh, that's smart. Oh, well, all right. <laughs> You all said you wanted presents. I think it's unfair that we are, you know, just doing this by ourselves. Uh, as he turns to Dorian again. Isn't that right, Master Dorian? And he takes that wreath and swings it at Dorian again. Oh, God. Wham! Hitting Dorian for quite a bit of damage. Oh wait, he hold on, hold on. My lantern's lit. He has disadvantage, doesn't he? Oh, I believe so. Yep. Uh, let me roll. Nice. Ah, Nineteen yes. Line. Yes. One less. Damage. Which damage do you want to use, though? It'll be the first one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Worth a shot. As Dorian, he smacks you with this large wreath. Um, and when he does, you start to feel a little strange, like maybe wealth isn't anything. If you didn't have this wealth, you wouldn't get be getting your ass beat by this guy. <laughs> As he lets out a, a bellowing laugh. Ho, ho, ho! Well, I think it's not fair that it's just us, right? Um as you hear the doors, boom, 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 open uh, wide. As quite a few things are going to uh, add themselves to the order. We need to bring ourselves into the present after all. Um, The first thing that happens, uh, Fox, you're going to see it as a giant snake comes slithering out. Do I still uh, have that held action? Yeah. Uh, can I shoot him when he's like back at this corner? Yes. Okay. Well, I'll shoot the snake and wolf. I'll shoot at whichever one came out first, which I assume is the snake. Yes. Uh, boom. 21 this will hit. 13. Are you... Boom! Blow off the head of this snake. A wolf leaps past it. Down the hall, these skittering spiders come hopping uh, down. These giant wolf spiders. Okay, he's going fucking ballistic at the wolf. Um, behind you, Dr. Doolittle and Appleseed. Appleseed, disconcertingly, in that room that you were in, you see what looks like a large magical rug uh, begin to writhe and move uh, as if alive, uh, but it is not its turn. So, Paul Bunyan stuck on the stairs. Uh, Dorian. All right. Well, uh, he does not have a reaction, by the way, if that is important to you. Oh, he doesn't? 
No, because uh, he was punched by Tarzan. Was oh, given a... I'm gonna I'm gonna take my shot. Well, actually, I'm gonna get out of this room, shoot <laughs> over the monkey. Oh. Yeah, quick. I uh, Twelve. 12. Hit. Uh, with just barely, it'll graze him. It kind of leaves just a little cut. All right, and Dorian's oh. gonna get around the corner. Naughty, naughty. As Dorian runs around the corner, see fucking giant spiders and wolves. Are you at a lucky one HP, Dorian? Uh, no, no, but I'm very low. And I don't feel like going back to my painting. <laughs> Hi, right, Dorian, you come running out and seeing all these spiders and things. Um, Doolittle and Appleseed, you see this rug sort of start to move. Uh, it moves very slowly. Um, it only has 10 foot of movement. As this ominous rug is sort of writhing along the floor, it's drenched in blood. Uh, as it seems like it had attacked someone earlier in the night. Uh, but you didn't tell because it was on the underside of the rug. Um, and it is uh, slithering its way towards you t uh, three, I guess. Oh, boy. Apple C. Or do, should we end it here? Because it's 1055. We're at the top Ooh, of the order. The top of the order. I think yeah, we ended here. Good yeah, end it here. Yeah. As we leave on a cliffhanger, will the party be able to deal with these menagerie of foes and a wreath-wielding ghost of present? Find out next time on Public Domain. <laughs> <laughs> and see. Oh, man. Oh. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and stay tuned for more unholy ghosts of death from the Adventurer's Landing.